thing that these companies have in common is a shared appreciation for just what the customer experience is. And to speak to that point, you know, because many people think that this term is synonymous with customer service, and I would argue nothing could be further from the truth. And to speak to that point, I want to tell you a story about something called rap rage. I don't know if you've ever heard this term, uh, but uh, if not, I'm going to give you the definition of rap rage from Jeff Bezos, the founder and CEO of Amazon.com. Bezos once said, rap rage is, quote, the frustration we humans feel when trying to free a product from a nearly impenetrable package. This is a trigger of rap rage. These clamshell or oyster shell packages, they're called. Very often kids' toys, electronics, LED light bulbs these days come in this kind of package. Uh, and uh, as you might be aware as a consumer, once you start cutting the side of the package, the edges are razor sharp. But what you might not know is this. Each year in the United States alone, 6,000 people end up in the emergency room with injuries inflicted from rap rage. They're trying so hard to extricate the product from this ridiculous packaging that they actually lacerate their bodies so badly they need to go see an ER physician. Now, scores more suffer minor scrapes and puncture wounds like this poor soul. You might be familiar with one of those injuries. And then, of course, we can't forget about the masses of children who experience psychological and emotional trauma as they try to wait patiently, watching their mom or dad open up their birthday present or their Christmas gift, all the while witnessing their parents mutilate their bodies in the course of doing so. So I hope you'll agree with me that rap rage is a serious issue for our country, but the reason that I tell this story in this talk is because Amazon.com's response to the phenomenon of rap rage is a great example of a company truly appreciating what the customer experience is and how to actively manage it. And here's how the story goes. In the mid-2000s, Amazon started to get feedback from their customers along the lines of, gee, it was really easy to buy off your website, but boy, it was a bear to open up the package that you sent me. People even started sending Amazon photographs. This is an actual photograph from an Amazon customer sent along with a note that said, these were all the tools I had to use in order to open up the package you sent me. Well, in 2008, Jeff Bezos and his management team hatched their response to the phenomenon of rap rage, and it was called frustration-free packaging. And basically what it meant is that Amazon negotiated with their suppliers, so wherever possible, the supplier removed the product from the clamshell so that Amazon then could take it, put it in a box, and ship it to you. You get it, you use it, you give it to your kids, there's no crying or tears, no blood or lacerations, everybody's a lot happier. And this has become something of a competitive advantage for Amazon because brick and mortar stores, they can't replicate it because they use the clamshell as an anti-shoplifting device. Moreover, it has become yet another compelling proof point around how easy it is to do business with Amazon. What I want you to take away from this story is Amazon's appreciation for the broad spectrum of touch points that comprise their customer experience. They recognize that even the mere act of opening the package, even if subconsciously, will influence people's perceptions about their interaction with Amazon. And so they manage that touch point as deliberately and intentionally as any other. A touch point that many would argue is out of their wheelhouse. Many people would say, hey, Amazon's done once they ship it from their warehouse. Amazon doesn't see it that way, and neither should you. As we go through the rest of today's talk and as you go back to the office, I encourage you to think broadly about the universe of touch points that comprise your firm's customer experience. Because I would argue that it begins from the earliest stages of pre-sale to the latest stages of post-sale. I'd even say that when you have a customer defect, you hope it doesn't happen, but when it does, that point of defection deserves to be managed as carefully and intentionally as any other touch point in your life cycle. Thank you.